Announcements none. Papers, papers have been made. Questions? Madam Speaker, to our Honourable Minister of Agro-Industry and Food Security, whether in regard to sugarcane planters, he will A, provide an analysis of the proposed price of 25,000 rupees per tonne of sugar for crop 2019 for the first 60 tonnes of sugar accruing, giving the estimated international price per tonne of sugar, together with other revenues accruing and grants to be provided, indicating the sources thereof, and B, state the medium and long-term measures that will be taken to ensure the survival and prosperity of the sugarcane sector, and especially those of the small planters. Madam Speaker, everybody in this house is fully alive to the fact that the sugarcane sector is going through a very tough phase for the past years. The primary cause of this situation is due to a continuous decline in the world price of sugar arising from excess supply on the world market, taking into consideration overproduction in EU, India, Brazil, Thailand, and other countries. Land abandonment is another major cause of concern. Accordingly, since 20, 2015, this government has taken bold measures with a view to ensuring the sustainability of this sector, namely, waiving of CES, waiving of insurance premium for planters producing up to 60 tons of sugar, writing off of cash advance and contribution due by small planters under forex, assistance to small planters under the cane replantation scheme, assistance to small planters for cane harvesting by providing them with bell loaders, increase in import tariff of cane sugar from 15% to 80% and assistance for purchase of fertilizers to small planters. Madam Speaker, with regard to part A of the question, as the House is aware, in the budget speech 2019-2020, it was announced that for crop 2019, all planters will benefit from an from an all-inclusive price of 25,000 rupees per tonne of sugar for the first 60 tonnes of sugar accrued to them. This price <coughs> includes expected, <coughs> excuse me, expected ex-MSS price of sugar per tonne of 10,000 rupees, other revenues including molasses and bagasse of 2,625 rupees per tonne of sugar. Grants from CEB, State Investment Financial Corporation, CIPCO, and SIFB of around 12,375 rupees per tonne of sugar. The total grant will thus amount to 650 million rupees. And the bulk of this amount will come from the CEB to the tune of 500 million rupees. Madam Speaker, with regard to part B of the question, the government is taking a series of measures to ensure the medium and long-term sustainability of the sugarcane sector. These measures include diversification of products, namely organic sugar and bioplastics, Generation 2 products derived from molasses, compliance with international sugar standards, namely Altru Mercato and Bon Sucro, encourage more planters to comply with fair trade requirements, introduction of AI and precision agriculture to reduce cost of production, development of software to optimize use of cane lands, and access to new markets, namely China, India, and make more inroads in our regional markets, such as SADC and Comesa. 
Madam Speaker, in addition to all the measures I have just mentioned, government has enlisted the services of the World Bank to carry out a thorough study of the sugarcane sector. The senior terms of reference of the study inter alia include a development of an economic and financial analysis tool to undertake an assessment of the performance of the sugar, sugar cane industry, that is small holder growers, producers, millers and traders. B, undertake an estimate of the value of externalities produced by the sugar cane industry, the multiply effect in, in other economic sectors, social environmental impacts, etc. C, develop a value chain risk assessment tool to assess the main risk to the sugarcane industry sector, including world market sugar price volatility, energy price volatility, weather and plant health shocks. D, undertake an assessment of the performance of public sector institutions supporting the sugarcane industry, including the MCIA, the MSS, the SIFB, and also the Ministry of Agri-Industry and Food Security. E, develop scenarios of a sustainable sugarcane industry and develop public policy and program options to transition to a sustainable state. F, agriculture policy and program recommendations to manage the likely impact on sector stakeholders giving a particular attention to the small planters, the most vulnerable ones, with a view to ensuring the long-term viability and sustainability of the Mauritian sugarcane industry. And G, review the operation of all institutions directly involved in servicing all the industry stakeholders and propose inter institutional reform measures for the support to be provided in an efficiently and cost-effectively manner. Madam Speaker, to conclude, let me reassure the House that this government, throughout its mandate, has been very sensitive to the plight of sugar cane planters, especially the 12,000 small planters whose livelihood, livelihood depend on the income derived from sugar. We will not leave any stone unturned to ensure the sustainability and viability of this industry. Madam Speaker, may I also know, Minister, when were the terms of reference finalized for the World Bank and have they already been submitted to the World Bank? And if so, when, please? Well, Madam Speaker, as I'm informed, uh, the uh, there were discussions with the, uh, uh, the technical people from the World Bank, and uh, I haven't got the date, but I know it's been finalized and been submitted. There have been uh, exchanges as well, but in the end, it's been finalized, and uh, uh, the works have already, already started, I must say. Uh, speaker, I understand that the terms of reference had not been submitted until a few days ago. I'd like to ask the Minister, why has it taken so long? after the ministerial committee was appointed last year already, announced in the budget. Why has it taken 12 months or so for the World Bank to be appointed? Well, Madam Speaker, we had to had discussion with the uh, people from the World Bank, had to agree upon on the terms of reference. And like I said, we have had exchanges with them to at least to come to a finalization of the, of the terms of reference. And that's being done. Now the work has or it started. I understand that someone came from the World Bank to discuss, but not finalized. I asked the Honorable Minister, the big complaint obviously from everyone is that there are no long-lasting measures, no long-term measures. Even the big planters, the small planters, everyone agrees on one thing, that there are no long-term measures. Can I ask the Honorable Minister, this discussion about increasing the price of bagasse paid by the CEB to 5,000 rupees, I note with some pleasure that it is, CEB is going to bear the bulk of this uh, uh, compensation this year. 
Why can't we finalize on a decent price of bagasse per ton of sugar, let's say? Why can't this be finalized? Why is it taking, hasn't taken four years or so? Well, Madam Speaker, we have to, to recognize the fact that there are contracts between uh, those independent power producing uh, enterprises and the CEB. Those are contracts that span over a certain number of years. And, well, we can't halfway through down the line come up with uh, amendments to contracts. I mean, these are contracts that are, I mean, we are in a state of law country. We can't kind of change the contract down the line. So, but renewables of contracts will come at a point in time where we have to, of course, look into those uh, issues to ensure that the uh, bagasse is being fairly uh, recognized in the production of energy out of sugarcane. Madam Speaker, is the minister now who has been four years in, in, in this post? Can you say that the price of bagasse that will be included in the next contract is going to be 5,000 rupees per equivalent ton of sugar? That's where, again, Madam Speaker, when we look at the terms of reference that we have uh, uh, agreed upon with the World Bank, is also to look into what not only for bagasse, but for other products that are, came out of sugarcane, what is the fair value that should be uh, imposed upon so that the growers, the planters, especially the small planters, get their good power in that particular industry. The same obviously goes for molasses. Madam Speaker, I'd like to ask the Minister, the, the, the terms of, frames of reference are so vast, very vast. How long? Has he given the World Bank to complete this report? Well, according to the timeline that we have set, by uh, May 2020, it should be uh, already uh, over. May 2020. Okay. <laughs> Next government. Madam Speaker, can I ask the, uh, the Honourable Minister, there is also this argument, I'm sure you are aware of, that bagasse should be uh, counted for, uh, on its own weight. Same for molasses on its own uh, volume, etc. This is that something that you are agreeable with, that you agree with this principle, and you will support this vis-à-vis -vis the World Bank. When well, all the way through, Madam Speaker, we have been fighting for the bagasse to be recognised having uh, an economic value in the production of energy. Hmm? It's still the fact that in previously when contracts were made between IPPs and CB, that was not taken into consideration. It is a fact, and that is why I have already been pressing so that, henceforth, new contracts, we have to consider the economic value of bagasse in the production of energy, so that growers are fairly remunerated for the bagasse they are supplying to the IPPs. I think the Minister will, will, will want to know that the people outside want commitments from government at this point in time, a few months before the end of Parliament. Madam Speaker, I'd like to ask the Minister now, you mentioned SIFB, whether he's aware that SIFB, through uh, all this assistance that it has given in the past, has now breached its solvency test. It is technically now no longer solvent as an insurance uh, entity. And what is the government doing about this? I see that you are expecting SIB to contribute more uh, this year also. Well, Madam Speaker, I can state to the House that at, uh, as at June 2019, the, the fund of the Sugar Insurance Fund Board stands at 3.7, nearly 3.8 billion rupees. And if we are to take out some money from that uh, uh, fund, we still will, will be at around 3.7 billion rupees, which is well above the uh, solvency uh, level. So that we have, I must say, before going into the kitty of, of the SIFB, we have looked into that and have made sure that that shouldn't uh, pose a problem it was regards to the solvency of the SIFB.
and I don't want to go into technicalities today, but my information is that it is now below at about 3.3 billion, but perhaps the, Prime, uh, the Minister will look at this again. I'd like to ask uh, the Honourable Minister, again on SIFB, that there has been a fraud, an attempt to defraud the planters of 450 million rupees. Now these same people, except for the board, but the board was not responsible for this, the same people that had attempted this to defraud are still today now at SIFB. How do you want the planter community to trust SIFB now? now? Well, I'm just going first I will say that uh, we have now a new uh, board with a new chairman at the level of the SIFB. We have also a new CEO at the level of the SIFB. And we have, in fact, we, 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 we set up a, a fact-finding committee to look at two issues that were uh, leveled up here itself. And uh, we received the, the part two of the report only two weeks back. And we have set up a committee which is being chaired by the senior chief executive of my ministry to look into all the recommendations and the, the, the issues that were raised in, that, uh, in the report and the recommendations made so that we can address the problem that, were, that arised. Madam Speaker, the, the first report was months ago. You announced it yourself in Parliament. And the CEO, particularly, I don't want to give his name, was, according to me, responsible for the attempt to defraud. He's still sitting there months after his hub is found out. And similarly, the uh, overvaluation of this famous land at Triano. The people responsible, as far as employees are concerned, they are still there. This is not acceptable, I would suggest, Mr. Minister, and if you could arrange for these people to be suspended and for disciplinary action to be taken as and when a disciplinary committee can uh, fi find, uh, give its findings. Like I said, Madam Speaker, we are processing by steps and uh, we've received the report. We have put in place that committee to look into the details of the report, and the facts of the report, and obviously, those who have been responsible for the maldon will be taken to task. We, I'm also aware that there is, there is a, uh, an inquiry also at the level of the ICAC with regards to the land acquisition that too is being looked at. And Speaker, I'd like to ask the Honourable Minister, uh, the whole cabinet, I think the Prime Minister, everyone, met with the IPPs, all the IPPs, famous meeting on, I think, the 4th of June, and uh, you requested 300 million rupees to be taken, a bit like doing with the Bank of Mauritius, but this time these guys were refused to, 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 to do so. Now, the, uh, this meeting, Madam Speaker, ended, it says here, unfortunately, on a sour note, with the people flatly refusing to, to concede to what the government had requested, on the grounds that we did not foresee any long-term, uh, addressing any of the long-term concerns of the industry. Can I ask the Honourable Minister whether he has responded to that letter in writing and whether, if he has done so, whether he will kindly grace Parliament with his response? Well, first, Madam Speaker, I don't know which to which letter he's referring to. to. Can well, you give I, do, I, do, I do confirm that we've had meeting with the, uh, with the uh, partners of the sugar industry and at a time when we are facing uh, these kind of difficulties, we have been looking for ways and means to support the industry. And true it is that we have also looked at how some of the partners who have been, in a, in a way, less affected by that situation, to see how they can uh, contribute or assist in that uh, patriotic, patriotic move that we want to uh, undertake to support the industry, especially for the small growers. Speaker, the letter is dated 6 June. I will not table it because he has a copy, I'm sure. And it is, in fact, addressed to the Prime Minister, copy to him. Do you know whether there has been a response? No, I don't want to table it. Do you want, uh, have you sent a response? Well, again, I, uh, yes, we have to look at the letter first because you are referring to one particular letter. Maybe, I mean, I would, I would rather have a look at it first before I respond to that. Take it that you receive such letters every day, that you do not remember this one? 
Nevertheless, Madam Speaker, let me, let me, uh, I presume so. I presume this is common practice in government to be told that these meetings end in a sour note, etc. Anyway, I think you know exactly what I'm saying. I'm going to, to, to my last point, Madam Speaker, before giving the floor. I want to talk to, uh, to the Honourable Minister about millers. Now, whatever you can say, everybody needs sugar mills to crush the cane and patati patata and get the, everything else. Now, we are left with, after the closure of Medin, which has caused a lot of, of concern, especially people in my constituency who are just next door, has caused a lot of concern to the cane planting community as to obviously transport of cane, etc. What are you doing to prevent another mill closing? And have you, I mean, has there been an attempt to close another mill? I don't know, I'm asking. What are you doing in the future that would be disastrous for the sugarcane industry? Well, Madam Speaker, centralization has been uh, an ongoing process over the years. If we go back years, there used to be some 300 mills on the island. And over the years, we've seen a decline in the number of mills. Of course, it's a question of the uh, amount of cane that we have and what each mill can crush. So there was some uh, report in the past that felt that there should be four mills on the island, which are situated on four different locations of the island, so as to ensure that they are close to the area where we plant sugar cane. Now, with this uh, uh, decline in the price of sugar, they are also facing difficulties because they derive their revenue from proceeds of sugar that are being uh, sold to the, uh, in the market. And Medellin, I must say, Medellin is of the four mills, is the one that didn't really invest or diversify in other sectors unlike Terra into uh, sugars or the others into refineries. And they were kind of, in a way, uh, only depending on the proceeds from sugar. And that is why, with the decline in the price of sugar, they were facing financial difficulties and they couldn't carry on with that particular activity and they had applied for closure, which we have agreed upon. And today, we're going to be left with only three factories. Now, like I said, those three factories that we have, they have diversified within their clusters and so far they are doing, let's say, with this situation, still uh, 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 they, are, they, are, they are coping with the situation. So as far as, as we are concerned, we are trying to do everything to support the whole industry and as you rightly mentioned, we can't do away with mills because if we, have, we need to have workers, planters, millers, and also buyers. And they're all interdependent on the other. And that is why in all the uh, exercise that we're going to undertake with the, uh, with the World Bank, we also to look at how we can protect the, all the partners in that particular industry so that no one is affected, which will have a cascading effect on the others. Yes, Honourable Bagwan. Thank you, Speaker, can I know from the Honourable Minister whether he has received requests from the trade unions with regard to the workers of the sugar industry, named, represented by Mr. Soubron, which has made public statements that he has request, made requests to government, whether he has met the workers and their representatives recently, especially with, the, with regard to the request for a new VRS, whether uh, he has discuss the workers and he can, can, let us, can, uh, can let us know where matters stand. Madam Speaker, with regard to uh, the workers, we've had a meeting uh, with them some time back, including Mr. Subon, and together with the Minister of uh, Labour, because one of their uh, uh, Plight was to have a common negotiate, national negotiating uh, forum to discuss with regard to uh, salary revision. 
Previously, there used to be the MSPA, and discussions with regard to salary negotiations were being held at that level. Now, we don't have any of that anymore, and each sugar states have their own way of working, and they deal with their uh, employees separately. So, the discussions are being done at that level. And uh, I'm told, I was, I was informed by the uh, technicians from the uh, <coughs> labor office that government should not get involved in collective bargaining. In fact, that was something that was criticized at the ILO. The fact that at one time, government was, had intervened and uh, we were criticized for having intervened in collective bargaining negotiations. So that's where it is with regard to that particular issue. Now with regard to VRS, I must say, Madam Speaker, when we came in 2015, there were 4,600 workers who, were, who had taken the privilege of going to uh, the, the VRS. That dates back to 20, 2007. And I have myself been uh, chairing committees to look at ways and means to expedite that process so that those beneficiaries could get their land that they're entitled to under that VRS scheme. We have, because I must say also that in that particular process, there are so many different authorities that are involved. And they all have to give their clearances so that we can uh, finalize the, the, the matter. I must say that now we have about 800 cases that st are still left. That will show again that the commitment of this government. We have now set up uh, an interministerial committee being chaired by the Vice Prime Minister herself to look at those pending matters and hopefully we'll see uh, uh, all those cases that are still pending uh, completed very soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I like the two. Can I impress upon the Minister? that it's time to act and we need to reposition the sector, knowing perfectly well that since 2017, there is no free lunch at all in the sector. And it's time to act. Can I impress upon him to reposition the sector, to bring all the stakeholders together, and to make sure that we implement findings of the reports that have been submitted. I have in mind Lender Mill reports and the Joint Technical Committee. Although the report of the Joint Technical Committee is lopsided and skewed towards the corporate sector. Can I impress upon him to do that? That's what we have been doing. Honorable yeah. Jagu, yeah. don't start by making provocations. Everything was calm. Yes. Yeah, Madam Speaker, uh, like I said, the sugar cane industry when we talk about it, it's, it, it's very uh, it's passionate uh, things that come up, and uh, we are all concerned with it. I mean, if we are what we are today, it's a lot to do with the sugar industry. And we, at the level of, of this government, we have been doing everything to at least, in the short term, to give all the support necessary to keep the, that industry afloat. And we are looking now for the medium and long term. And like I said, we have already come up with a series of measures to support them in the very uh, immediate. Uh, but we need also to look at the, at the, at the uh, medium term and long term. And that's what we are doing. Uh, so rest assured, uh, former Minister of Agriculture, that we are doing uh, everything to keep this, this industry viable for the future. Yes, Honorable Ratna, and then last thank, question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, can the Honorable Minister state, uh, other than the, the current proposed price of 25,000 per tonne for this year's crop, whether his ministry has developed any strategies uh, as yet 
to protect small planters uh, in the long term. Again, Madam Speaker, in, in my reply, I did mention a series of measures, be it with regard to help them to uh, do their harvest in terms of equipment that we are providing, in terms of support for fertilizers and other uh, support that we are That was already providing. in your reply. Yes. 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 Madam Speaker, may I ask just as a final question, Honourable Minister? We are waiting. We'll, we expect the World Bank report, May 2020. It will have to be studied and there will be a ministerial committee, all this. In the meantime, we all know that the situation is desperate, that people will continue, maybe even accelerate abandonment of land. Therefore, I'll uh, perhaps join what my colleague, uh, my friend Alvin Bullell just said, whether it is now not urgent for the minister to organize some sort of assise de l'agriculture, all the parties together and discuss the situation and give back confidence to the sector because we really cannot wait another year, year and a half or two years for this uh, sector to be reformed. I must say, Madam Speaker, even though if we have uh, asked the World Bank to conduct that study, we are not waiting for the report to be out to start acting. I must say, with regard to the market itself, we have been looking for new markets. And I must say, thanks to the intervention of the Prime Minister himself, we have been able, able to secure uh, some of our sugar to get into the Chinese market, which is a very protected market. 50,000 tons of sugar, it's not, we are producing about roughly 350,000 tons of sugar, and 50,000 tons of sugar is quite significant. And it's going to help a lot this industry. We are discussing with India, another sector. Let's hope that also comes to some fruition. We are looking at the regional market, be it with Kenya and other countries within the Tadek and Kumisa region. These are the actions that we are taking, we are, we, which, we, which we have been taking for some time to kind of at least relieve the industry from the problems they're facing with the reduction of the price. And like I said, we are investing in uh, new technologies. Uh, have been discussing with a, uh, an Indian uh, promoter who is going to make use of satellite remote sensing equipment to do what we call a mapping of all the land and sugar to make sure where there are crops, where they need to be irrigated, where there need to be uh, application of, of uh, fertilizers. These are the kind of technologies that are going to use, which is according to their uh, findings, going to increase the yield by 10% and at the same time reduce the cost of production. So these are the kind of things that we have already been uh, implementing. And we have a system that we have developed to identify land that are, are being abandoned so that we can get them back into either the, the, the cane industry or in other agricultural sector. So, like I said, we are not kind of sitting back and waiting for the uh, World Bank to come up with this report to start doing things. So, like I said, we are also concerned. We have always shown concern to that sugar industry. Not now. It's been for, for years now. And we'll continue to do it. Thank you. Time is over.